Good morning. Good morning. Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today is just the third Sunday of Easter, and we remember how quickly things go uh, from the time that Christ rose from the dead, and yet we continue to celebrate as his people and remember what he's done for us. And so we do have some announcements. I'm Pastor Doug Chinberg. I'm Pastor Scott Pitch, and I'll start with the connection card. Um, this is our way of getting to know you a little bit better and sharing the things that are going on at King of Kings with you. So if you wouldn't mind filling this card out, drop it in the basket as you leave. And uh, on the back side, there's also space for comments and prayer requests. So anything you want to share with us, uh, if you have prayer requests for you or someone else you know, go ahead and add those. Our staff loves to pray those prayers with the people of our congregation. So we'd love to pray for you this week if you have prayers. For those who signed up, today is our Shine Day, where we will have our different servant events that will take place. And so after the late service today, people will meet downstairs and there will be assignments given as far as where you go and what you'll do. Uh, so again, just a reminder that the Shine event is after the late service today. On April 19th, we have our senior event, so there's a sign up for that in the lobby by the Connection Corner, so if you're interested in that event, information or to sign up, make sure you check that before you leave. I want to remind you also that the women's retreat is coming up on April 27th, that is woven. There's a place to sign up out in the lobby if you're interested, so please take a moment and stop by and check it out. On April 25th, we have our uh, food drive with Circle of Concern. So make sure that you're aware of the information on that. And there's still a sign up for volunteers, and we do need more volunteers for that event. In the meantime, I have homework for you guys. Uh, every family unit as you leave today will receive a packet of 10 of these door hangers. Uh, this is an outreach initiative we're trying to do to increase uh, the impact in our community for this Circle of Concern food drive. So you'll be handed a packet of 10 of these. I know, I know you don't necessarily want homework because you're adults, but this is actually a pretty easy task. You're going to take a lovely walk on this beautiful day and put 10 door hangers on the doors of 10 of your neighbors. And this thing invites them to leave canned goods on their front doorstep, and it says on Saturday, April 20th, that you'll come by to pick up whatever food anyone in that group of 10 might drop. You might have nobody give anything at all, in which case that's an easy job. If you have all 10, you know, and you need help picking some up, I'll call me, I'll come help you pick it up. That's a wonderful problem to have that you had that many people want to donate. Um, then on that Sunday, which is next Sunday, the 21st, whatever food you collect on the 20th, you'll bring uh, to uh, the church and put in Strickert Hall. We'll have tables set up in Strickert Hall to collect the food that's donated by your neighbors and by you uh, to take to the uh, Circle of Concern on that Thursday the 25th. So you'll get a packet of 10 of these door hangers as you leave today, and please uh, do consider putting those on the doors of your neighbors. We also want to let you know that the next two weeks, next two Sundays, we're going to have a town hall meeting. Uh, we want to show you, uh, there's been a committee that's been working over the last number of months about looking at how we can upgrade and update our sanctuary, and we want to show you what those ideas um, that we've talked about, what they might look like. So we've been working with some architects, and they are going to come and show a rendering of what it looks like. Next Sunday we'll meet, next Sunday we only have two services because it is our musical next Sunday. So we'll have a service at 8 and 11, but at 9.30 we're going to meet here in the sanctuary and the architects are going to talk about uh, the recommendations that we're looking at. So we want to share that with you. We want ideas from you, so if you have ideas you can share with us at that time. Uh, in two weeks the architects are going to meet after the late service. And so, again, we'll meet in the sanctuary, but that will be about 12.15 to 12.20, whenever the late service is over. But uh, mark it on your calendar. We want to hear from you. We want your input. So uh, let us know uh, what your thoughts are. The other announcements are on the yellow sheet that's in your worship folder, so please read through that as well. But at this time, we want to invite you to stand, and we are going to sing our gathering hymn, Good Christian Friends, Rejoice and Sing.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is, he is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Let all who take refuge in you be glad. Let them sing, ever sing for joy. Spread your protection over them, that those who love your name may rejoice in you. May all who seek the Lord rejoice and be glad in him. May those who love his salvation always say, The Lord be exalted. There is great joy in knowing that God loves us so much that he sent his one and only Son to suffer and die for us, so that we might be forgiven of our sins. Let us confess our sins to God and to one another with assurance that we are forgiven through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we admit and confess our sinfulness. We are by nature sinful, and we have not always lived as thankful and joyful people. We have turned away from you. We do repent of our sins and are truly sorry for them. Have mercy on us, gracious Father. Forgive us all that is past, blot out our sins, and with the power of the Holy Spirit, direct our lives so that we serve you in true faithfulness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pause now for silent reflection upon our lives as we confess before Almighty God. Dear brothers and sisters of our Lord Jesus Christ, I have great news for you this day. That by the power of Christ and what he has done for us on the cross, he has set free the chains of death, the devil, and of our sin from us. So that we would be, have all of those things removed from us as far as the east is from the west. So as I call an ordained servant of Christ and by his command, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now rejoicing in that forgiveness of sins, let us share the peace of Christ with one another this morning. together. O Almighty and Eternal God, you have assured us of the forgiveness of our sins and new life in you through the death and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus. Because we have been rescued from the peril of everlasting death, fill our hearts with voices with perfect gladness and eternal joy. 
Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, we'll continue with our children's message given today by Benjamin Simmons. Parents, if you want to come forward with your kids, you're more than welcome to do so. sleepy, but that's okay. We'll take it. All right, so I have a question for you guys. Have you ever done show and tell? Have you ever done show and tell? Maybe at school, your school does show and tell, or maybe you know about that, or maybe you've done it with your friends. So I thought I would do some show and tell for you, because I wanted to show you some of my favorite things that I have. So I'm going to start first with uh, this, this jersey. I'm a big baseball fan, so I'm really happy right now about uh, our start to the season. So I want to show you my Orioles jersey. This is the team that I support, and you know, I'm just a big, big fan. So this is, I love this jersey. So I'm going to wear this jersey because, you know, it's one of my favorite things. So I got, got a couple more I want to show you. I don't know if any of you guys are a fan of Legos, but I love Legos. Anyone like Legos? Yeah, that, they're some of my favorite things. This is one, a cool baby Yoda. I like this set. He comes out and then can go into this thing. I think it's so cool. This is one of my favorite things. Oh, and also, my favorite color. I'm going to tell you my favorite color. You ready? Ready for it? It's actually yellow. I love, I love the color yellow. This is a little guy. I don't really know what he is, but he's yellow, and I think it's kind of cool. So these are some of the things that make... Yeah, isn't that silly looking? He, these are some of the things that make me, me, right? I love these things. They're some of my favorite things. But do you think these are the only things that make me who I am? What do you think? Maybe, maybe not, right? There's a lot of things that make us who we are. Maybe, raise your hand if you're a kid. You a kid? Yeah, right? We're all, we're all children in some way. Maybe, raise your hand if you are a friend. Yeah, or are you a student? Do you go to school? Ooh, yeah, right? We're all a lot of different things, right? We all do a lot of different things. And those things and the things we like kind of make us who we are. But there's something even more special that make us who we are. And I want to show you something. It's another thing I brought. This is what it is. What do you think that could be? What do you think this means? It's a cross, right? And this is a very special cross for me. This is the cross that I got at my baptism. See, it's a little, little child getting baptized. And in our reading today, we learn about what John says. He said how good it is that we are called children of God, and that is what we are. That's what we are. We're Jesus' children, yeah. Yeah. And he died on a cross. And when we're baptized, we know that we are Jesus' children. And that makes us really special. That's really the thing that makes us the most special. That's the most important thing for us. Now, is it easy to be a child? Hmm. Might be a hard question, right? At first, we think maybe it is. But is it easy to follow rules? Is anybody, have you ever, do you think it's easy to follow rules? To listen? Maybe not, right? Sometimes that's, that's a difficult thing. Sometimes we're not so good at listening. And even grown-ups are not good at listening or following rules, right? And that's why we need Jesus. And what did Jesus do on, on a cross? What did Jesus do? He died on a cross, right? And then he did something else after that too, right? He rose again for us, right? And he gave us that gift that even when we're not such good children, he still loves us and cares for us so we can know that and have that and that's what makes us special so let's go ahead and fold our hands just like that and you can bow your heads and you can repeat after me dear jesus Jesus, thank you you for loving us us. help us us be your children children. every day day. in your name we pray pray. Amen. amen 
Well, thank you guys. Thanks for letting me show off some of my stuff. <laughs> The first lesson is from Acts chapter 3, verses 11 to 21. While the man held on to Peter and John, all the people were astonished and came running to them in a place called Solomon's Colonnade. When Peter saw this, he said to them, Fellow Israelites, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us as if by our own power or godliness we had made this man walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob... The God of our fathers has glorified his servant Jesus. You handed him over to be killed, and you disowned him before Pilate, though he had decided to let him go. You disowned the holy and righteous one and asked that a murderer be released to you. You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. We are witnesses of this. By faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and know was made strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has completely healed him, as you can all see. Now, fellow Israelites, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did your leaders. But this is how God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, saying that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, then, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord, and that he may send the Messiah who has been anointed for you, even Jesus. Heaven must receive him until the time comes for God to restore everything, as he promised long ago through his holy prophets. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> the epistle lesson is from 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. All who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who sins breaks the law. In fact, sin is lawlessness. But you know that he appeared so that we, he might take away our sins, and in him is no sin. No one who lives in him keeps on sinning. No one who continues to sin has either seen him or known him. Dear children, do not let anyone lead you astray. The one who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite the congregation to stand for the gospel acclamation. According to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. We read together. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled, and why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see I have. When he had said this, 
he showed them his hands and feet. And while they still did not believe it, because of joy and amazement, he asked them, Do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. He said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so that they could understand the scriptures. He told them, This is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repent for the forgiveness of sins, will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my Father has promised. But stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And now with the whole Christian Church, we confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, true God of true God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. You may be seated. This time I want to take a moment to extend our thanks to our congregation for its continued generosity as we receive tithes, offerings of uh, talents, time, and treasure. We thank you for the gifts that you give, acknowledging that the ministry of this church and indeed the, the ministry of God's people in the lives of the communities around us are all served by the giving of the hands and the gifts of people like you and me. And so we thank you for putting those gifts to, go, to good use, while also acknowledging that all that we do give is actually a gift first and foremost from God to us, so that we might then use them for his kingdom purposes. So let's extend our thanks to him in prayer. Heavenly Father, we give thanks this day that for your... Uh, for your goodness to us, you have given us the task of also showing our goodness to those around us through our generosity of our hearts, of our time, of our talents, and of our treasures. Help us to be generous people in the way we conduct ourselves, giving glory to you for all good things, and serving and loving our neighbor as ourself. We thank you for the greatest gift you ever gave, your own dear son, Jesus Christ who gave up his own life as a gift to each and every one of us, so that we might be set free from the consequences of our sin. We pray if it be your will, O Lord, you will help us to emulate him in the way we give our lives for the sake of those around us. We pray all of this in Jesus' holy and precious name, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen.
It is our gospel reading that is our text for today, and I'll read a portion from Luke 24. Then Jesus opened their minds so that they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written. The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. You would bow your heads with me in prayer. Heavenly Father, today we hear again of the peace that Jesus gives to his disciples. And then he opens their hearts and minds so that they can understand your word. Open our minds today and remind us of our need for repentance and forgiveness of sins. And then empower us to be your witnesses, to share your love with those who so desperately need it. We ask this all in the powerful name of Jesus Christ and all God's people said. Amen. Grace and mercy and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I don't know if anyone here saw the West County Magazine that came out on April 3rd. It had the story, uh, the story on the front cover was called On Fire for Good. Anyone see that? Anyone read it? A couple people. It was a story of a man by the name of John O'Leary. John O'Leary, when he was just nine years old, was in his parents' home and the home burned. And he received burns on 100% of his body. He was expect, expected to die. And the doctors gave him just 1% chance to live. His mother told him, if you want to live, you are going to have to fight. O'Leary doesn't know who told Jack Buck, but Jack Buck came to visit him while he was in the hospital. Jack Buck heard about O'Leary, and he not only came once, but he came again and again and again. He found out that O'Leary loved sports, and so Jack Buck brought some friends. He brought Ozzy Smith, he brought Andy Van Slyke, he brought some friends from the Blues to come and visit O'Leary during his recovery. It was Jack Buck and his friends that encouraged O'Leary to learn how to write again, even though all of the fingers of his hands had been lost in the fire. And O'Leary and Jack Buck became lifelong friends. O'Leary never intended to tell his story. He just wanted the pieces of his life to get put back together so that he could go on with his life but that's not what happened. His parents actually wrote a book called Overwhelming Odds. And they wrote the book. It was just meant to be for family and friends as a, a word of thanks and encouragement for all who encouraged their son during his time of recovery and healing. But one person told another, and they told another, and the story spread. Then O'Leary was asked to share his story with some third grade Girl Scouts, and so he agreed. And he went there, and there were three girls that were there. But someone shared the story, his story. And that led to a larger group, and it went on. O'Leary continued to share his story and to speak to different groups. Today there is a large group of people that work with him to set up speaking engagements around the world. He has spoken to over 2,600 organizations and millions and millions of people throughout the world. Today is the third Sunday of Easter. It's the gospel, it is the, the evening of that first gospel day. In Luke's gospel, we've heard the stories of the women who have run to the tomb 
They found it empty. They ran back and told the disciples. Peter, in, in uh, Luke's gospel, ran to the tomb. He also found it empty. He came back again and shared what he had seen with the disciples that were there in the upper room. In Luke's gospel, Jesus has also walked with the Emmaus disciples to their home in Emmaus. And he opened up the scriptures to them so that they might understand what God's plan was all about. And it wasn't until Jesus was in their home and broke bread with them that they realized that it was Jesus who had been with them. And then he disappeared. And the Emmaus disciples ran back to Jerusalem to tell the others what they had seen and what they had heard. The followers of Jesus were trying to understand all of the things that had gone on. They were just trying to put the pieces back together. And it was Jesus, when he came into their midst, that he helped them do exactly that. Put the pieces back together. And so that's the theme of today's message. God does that in our life as well, doesn't he? He, he puts the pieces back together so that we understand what goes on in the world and what goes on in our life, even when there are times that seem to make no sense. As it was that evening on that first Easter, again the disciples were gathered together. The followers of Jesus were more and more convinced that Jesus' grave was empty, but they didn't know exactly what that, what that meant. People in those days generally believed that when a person died, their soul may roam the earth. People in Jesus' day believed in ghosts and they were afraid of them. However, it was unthinkable. It was unthinkable that a person who had died could come back to life in bodily form. And yet that is exactly what Jesus did. And so Jesus wanted to convince his disciples that he was not a ghost, but he was a real live person. He appeared in their midst. He said, touch my hands, see my wounds, see where I was crucified. It is I, believe. He invited them to touch him, and then he said to them, a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see I have. And then he asked them for something to eat. And they gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and he ate it. There must have been a great struggle going on in the minds and the hearts of the disciples to understand what was Jesus doing? What is God's plan in this world? And again, so it is with us today. We too struggle at times. Not to understand the big plan. We know that God created the world. We know that Jesus came and lived and died and rose again. We know that he's going to come back. Sometimes, sometimes we're not quite sure what we're to do today. What does God have in store for me today? At times, we struggle with faith and doubt, just as the disciples did. And so Jesus opened their minds so that they could understand the scripture. And he began to put the peace offer and die that on the third day he would rise again from the dead. And repentance and forgiveness of sins would be preached and proclaimed in his name beginning in Jerusalem. We too need that forgiveness preached and proclaimed to us. We also need to hear it every day. The work that Christ has done is for us each and every day to wash our sins away, to remind us who we are, as Benjamin mentioned in our children's message. We are the children of God. And we do the work of God. Even when doubts arise in our minds. And then Jesus, as he was talking with his disciples, concluded with both a command and a promise. He said, you are witnesses of these things, and I am going to send you what my father has promised. Jesus was coming to an end, and the mission of the church 
was about to begin. This past week, I read a story of a friend who was a classmate of mine in the seminary. His name is Greg Finke. He's actually written three different books. This is the third of his book, Joining Jesus as a Family. As I was reading his book, he shared one of the most humiliating things that happened in his life. He said he was a young pastor just out of the seminary. He was placed or called to Central Michigan. He was at a congregation that had exceptional growth for about 10 years. It grew over 1,000 people in attendance on Sunday morning between 1990 and 2000. He said during that time he was scrambling, trying to keep the ability to lead people and to disciple them at the same time. And it was during that time Jesus began to press on him the need to spend time with him in prayer. And he said, I knew that. I knew I needed to do that. I, I knew that I needed to spend more time with Jesus. He said, it just made sense. He said, I even wrote it down in my notes. He said, I wrote down, start a regular prayer time. But he said he just found himself too busy to do that. He went on to say that the real reason was not that he was too busy for prayer. It was not because his schedule was too full, but he said it was because I was too full of myself. He said I was hardworking, I was energetic. He said he was quietly convinced that he could handle the challenges that God had given to him. He said, I had energy, I had answers, I had vision. He said, in my mind, Jesus was invaluable. But he said, I was indispensable. Over the next number of years, he added a second service, and that filled up. He added a, a third service, and that filled up. And he said, well, I can just add a fourth service, and it will be great. Plans were made, the schedule was announced, the appointed Sunday came, the first three services were full. He came to the fourth Sunday and there were 20 people that were there. And he said, I just need to give us some time. The next Sunday, the first three services were filled, the fourth Sunday had 12 people there. And he said, I, I just need to give it a little more time. And the third Sunday came and the first three services were filled. And he said, there was no one at the fourth service. In fact, he made the comment, not even Jesus showed up. <laughs> God has gone on to do great things through this man. But the point is, is that sometimes our world falls apart. And it's only by the power of God that he can put the pieces back together. Only God can put the pieces back together. There are times in our world where our world is turned upside down. And God stops us because we need to learn something. He presses the brakes. And he says, I want you to learn some humility. I want you to learn some patience. I need you to learn some wisdom. And he begins to put the pieces back together, the way that they were created to fit. Sometimes we spend so much time defending our own thoughts and ideas that we don't stop to listen to God and to ask what his plans are. And that's what he wants to remind us today, what his plans are. And the greatest plans that he has for us is simply to be with him, to stop, to hear his voice, and to follow him. Earlier I was telling you about John O'Leary, and today they're in the process of making a movie. The movie is called On Fire. On Fire. It was filmed earlier this year here in St. Louis. It will come out either this fall or next spring of 2025. 
It is the desire of O'Leary to share stories of people who are on fire for good, who are doing good in their community, doing good in their families. He said, these stories are stories of individuals who are grateful for the life that they have. They're stories about being joyful in the activities that they're engaged in. They're, they're stories about offering hope to the communities that they live in. And that's exactly what Jesus was doing. He was filling his people with hope, with life, with strength and courage so that they might go out into the world as his witnesses to share his love. Again, sometimes our worlds are turned upside down. And the best thing that can happen, as he intended to accomplish his purposes, and the joy that God gives us when he humbles us and when he strengthens us is that we have the opportunities then to share the greatest gift that he's given us. And that is the gift of his love with those around us, those who need it, so that they might come to know Jesus Christ and the life that he has to give them. And to that all God's people can say, Amen. Amen. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I invite the congregation to rise as we continue with our hymn of response. we come before you in thankfulness that you call us your beloved children. We pray that you, we would have faith to trust in you for everything that we need, that we would call on your name in every moment of trial, and that we would for need of your healing hand. And so we pray this day especially for Marcy, Dan, Annie, Pam, Roy, Deb, Edie, and all of our homebound members. Lord, if it be your will, remind these individuals of your presence in their hour of need. And if it be your will, bring healing to their minds, bodies, and souls. Lord, in your mercy. We pray a prayer of rejoicing for the baptisms of the Mula Mula family during the 930 service. We pray if it be your will that the waters of baptism would wash clean uh, all these individuals from their sin. And that the faith which they will have, Thomas and Lindley Schwartz. And we pray that we also for Scott and Yvette Lothan and for Greg and Cindy Cooper. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of marriage, for the blessing of family, for the opportunity to share a sacrificial love that, that is new each day and that puts the other before ourselves. The same love which you have for all of us. We pray for our congregation, Lord, for all of those who are leaders in our congregation. We pray for our small groups and our small group leaders. We pray for all those who do outreach, who do um, missions of different types. We pray for all of those involved in the ministry of your church, that you would continue to lift them up, bless them, and give them an extra measure of uh, trust and purpose in what you have given them to do. Lord, in your mercy. 
We pray, O Lord, for our sister congregation in the Missouri District, St. Mark's in Eureka, and for Pastor Bob Leibman and Joshua Resnick. If it be your will, O Lord, continue to bless the congregation of St. Mark's in the community of Eureka so that more will know the name of Jesus Christ and will call on his name in their hour of need. We pray for our president, for our Congress, for all governing officials, local and state and national, that they would do your will, O Lord, institute policies which value life. We pray that you'll watch over all U.S. military personnel, first responders, health foreign parts of our world. Lord, if it be your will, bring peace to these places so that those who are suffering can have that suffering eased and so that peace can return. But we pray especially for the peace which passes all understanding to fall upon all mankind. We pray for persecuted Christians around the world, that you would strengthen them as they stand firm in the faith which they have in you, in the, in the face and despite the challenges that that faith brings into their lives. Help them to be an example to all of us to stand firm in our faith, even when the world seems to be increasingly showing us that it is not advantageous, but rather harmful to our, to our uh, personalities and harmful to our uh, reputation. And finally, Lord, we pray for those who are on mission for your church, knowing that you call us all to go and make disciples of all nations. And so we pray especially for those who are serving in St. Louis, that you would continue to bless and keep them as they do your work. Finally, Lord, we pray for these and all things in the name of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord's Supper is God's gift for Christians. Lord's table you affirm with each communicant that Jesus is your Savior and Lord. And with Lutheran Christians, you confess. I recognize and confess that I am in Savior from sin, Satan, and death. I believe that the risen Christ is really present in the sacrament and under the form of the bread and wine. I receive his true body and blood for the forgiveness of my sin and the strengthening of my faith in life. I resolve to dedicate my life to the service of my Lord in his body, the church, by regular group worship, sacrificial giving, thankful living, and sharing the gospel with others. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Take and eat, this is my body, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. At this time, if you're taking communion from one of our kits, you can take that out at this time. Welcome to the table of the Lord. You can peel back that top cellophane layer. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. You can peel back the second tab. Take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you. This time, I'll invite our ushers to come forward to, to begin to dismiss row by row to come forward for communion.
Now may this body and blood of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in true faith, life everlasting, depart in his peace with joy, knowing that your sins are forgiven. Amen. Tell everyone what he has done, let everyone who seeks the Lord rejoice and proudly bear his name. He recalls his promises, leads his people forth in joy with shouts of thanksgiving. Alleluia, alleluia. As you go this day, go with the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Now go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.